the first book of Samuel, session 45. So David went through everything that he's went through. He's done whatever he had to do to survive. And now in chapter 22, David starts gathering his mighty men. Now it's very interesting. We're going to see, first of all, in the physical, how David is busy starting um, an army, how a new Davidic army is born. But look at the kind of people that it's born out of. Look at the kind of people that joins David. Look at where he gets his mighty men from. Not from mighty warriors that's got big positions in politics and church. David therefore departed from there. From where? Remember where he was. He was at, uh, first of all, at Ahimelech, the priest. And then he went to King Achish. Achish from Gath, remember. And he pretended to be crazy. And then he departed from there. You know, they <laughs> let him go without killing him. Because he changed his behavior before them. We went through that. So he escaped to the cave Abdullam. So he was hiding at this cave Abdullam after he... Um, escaped um, Saul when uh, what was her name Ahman his, his wife that he got married to when she put the um, Michal when she put the idol in the place of his uh, body in bed so David escaped from Saul and then he, he fled to the priest he was actually for a for a period being looked after by the priestly system and then he wanted to find um, a little bit of protection from the enemy. But the enemies of David doesn't have, doesn't have protection for him. The enemies of, of God's people in the end days is not where we're going to find our protection. Our protection will be because we are in covenant with God. And we've heard his promises like David have heard it. And he knows what is his end time goal. Um, and then the enemy is not going to, going to protect you. You might find yourself within the enemy's camp for whatever reason, for a time such as this. But they don't give protection. So he, went, he then went and he found protection in the cave Abdullam. The meaning of the cave name Abdullam is not so easy to find. But if you dig a little bit, you get to justice of the people. Adul Am. Am um, is always people. Remember, law ami, you are no longer my people. So adul am um, has got to, the meaning of justice for my people. So David escaped to a cave called justice for my people. As David represents the, for me, um, it's representing the people of Yahuwah. That is escaping the persecution and the disillusioned kings of the earth in the end days who wants to kill them and um, stick spears in them and want to make sure that God's chosen Moshiach is not crowned and is not sitting on the throne. Um, but there's another thing. For some reason, when David got to this cave Adullam, he might have thought back about his, you know, great, great, great grandfather, Judah, you know, the son of Yaakov, the son of Jacob, one of his 12 sons is Judah. And Judah um, is the man, but out of the man comes the tribe. And this man, Judah, also found this cave, found this cave, Adullah. He was in an area and he met his wife there, the wife of um, the three sons. So in the same place where Father Judah received his first wife or met his first wife is the same place where a descendant of Judah is now finding a little bit of um, escape. So yeah, in Adullam, David's brothers and all his father's house heard where he was and they came to visit him. And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto David in Adullam and he became a captain over them. And there was with him about 400 men. Now, if you look at this verse, and I really want you to take a pen and underline this verse, because 
first of all in the physical people in your living room you can sometimes have about 40 or 50 people and then it's totally cramped imagine you and 400 guys all hiding away in a cave and these 400 guys if you look at the number 400 you look at the number four 400 4000 you know and 40 40 days and 40 nights not only of Noah and Moses but Yeshua and all through the rest of scripture four is always the messianic figure and for some reason this little shepherd's boy who's actually the crowned king in disguise in hiding he is gathering to him people that are in distress people that are in debt people that are discontented the discontented the distressed and the indebted people are gather are gathering themselves together god says because of your um, disobedience to me i will scatter you into every tribe nation and tongue and there you will become distressed deuteronomy 4 in your tribulation in your end days when you are distressed you'll remember me you'll obey my voice and i myself will gather you again yeshua said he came for those who are um in prison for those who, who, who owe who are so indebted they owe so much like the the whole parable he told when the prostitute washed his feet when he told the parable about the one man that owed a lot of money and he couldn't pay it and the governor gave him grace gave him freedom and gave him freedom and gave him um, release of what he owed so so Yeshua is the one that can that can take our debt upon him when we are in distress and we come to David in the cave Adullah of our forefather Judah and we come with our distress and our debt and our discontention we are not happy where we are we are outcasts we are not um, fitting in with society so we choose to gather ourselves together with these 400 men and we rather hide in the cave Adullam together with David our king who is a shepherd boy than sit under the um, hand of the king who is not a godly man and who wants to have the death of David our king beautiful end time picture here in in this cave where there is just people where God's people are gathered under the hand of David when we are prepared to go into battle for Yahuwah with only five little stones while the enemy has absolutely everything to their advantage and we've only got five little stones but when we are when we are in in covenant with God if we decide to really believe him and follow him and obey him and and trust that he is he, not lying to us about his promises and about his covenants then we are the kind of man and woman that goes into battle and we fight against Goliath we can even survive King Saul and we we follow the shepherd but not only follow the shepherd we also do what the shepherd does we also go and look for the lost sheep while we sing the psalms most beautiful psalms to our God even in our biggest moment of distress in the in the darkest cave fleeing for our lives seeing how God is gathering mighty loyal good and faithful friends and brothers and sisters with us although we are in a cave we are not alone it is better to be in a cave and under the hand of God than to be in the palaces of the kings and be under the hand of the serpent so we rather be in the cave after we have won the fight after we like Elijah have made it maybe done something amazing on Mount Carmel <clears throat> and the next moment you want to die of depression and loneliness and fear but rather be there where God can can take you further on this road on this way he started this road he started this journey 
He brought you out of Babylon. He brought you out of Babylon, Abraham. He brought you out of Egypt, O Israel. And he's bringing you from the ends of the earth, O Ephraim. He started this way on which you are, and he will not stop it. Neither should you. Continue on this way. Let God gather the distressed, the indebted, and the discontented. And let the army, the end day, 400 strong battle army of God, let it grow to the um, glorification and to the expansion of God's kingdom. And although, although these men are seen as distressed and debted and discontented, they are actually men just like David. They are willing to live in the field, you know, and eat only maybe, you know, once a week or something. There's not food all the time. They are men after God's own heart and belong to society anymore. They don't function really nicely. Some of them are so indebted to society. They are so imprisoned by the Egyptian pharaoh economic system of slavery and bondage that they have no choice. And they, they choose to leave all that behind and be willing to give their lives in battle with David. They're willing to follow David wherever he goes. Just like the book of Revelation says, the 144 young men will follow the Lamb wherever he goes. And these lost sheep is what is being gathered with David, the shepherd. The lost sheep find their hiding place in Adullam, the cave of justice for God's people. And this is where we find our rest, in the middle of being persecuted, but in the middle of being maybe hungry and tired and dirty and cold in the cave. We as the 400 chosen ones in the end day um, army of God that is standing up for the glorification of the son of David, who's being gathered by the hand of God, who comes together at the place where we can find justice for God's people. The only place we can find justice is at the Messiah, the son of David's hand. So in this cave, Adullam is the only place where there's justice for the people that's in distress, that's indebted and that's discontented. But when you gather here a justice for the people and you, and you allow yourself under the hand of the little shepherd boy that has been anointed king, and that, uh, that is the man after God's heart that has been chosen for the next king of Israel, the next king of Israel, then you are in a much better place than you could have been anywhere in Judah or in Jerusalem or even inside the king's palace. Because like David says in um, the end of chapter 22 at verse 23, he speaks to Abiatar and he says, Abide with me, stay with me, don't fear. For he that seeks my life, seeks your life also. But with me, you shall be safe. We will be safe when we follow the good shepherd, the anointed king, even in the hiding away of the kings of the earth, but hiding ourselves under the one who has the final justice in his hand. With him, we are safe because like Yeshua said, you know, a servant is no better than his master. They wanted my life. They hate me. They persecuted me. They will want your life. They will hate me. They will want your life. They will hate you. They will persecute you. Like David says, he that seeks my life, King Saul, is now also seeking your life. So the moment you choose to join yourself with me, with David, you become enemy number one to King Saul, to the Antichrist system, to the kings of the earth. The moment you join Yeshua, really join him, come to his side where, you know, not, not the false Antichrist copy, false religion in Yeshua that the false prophets are trying to portray in this world. And you come over to the real shepherd king, the one who will execute justice and who's currently busy executing justice by bringing his people back to a just way of living. When you, when you go with that king, with that shepherd, 
you become enemy number one of the kings of the earth and the rulers of the world, of King Saul. But this is the only place where you are safe. So join with me. Do not fear. Live with me. Stay with me. Abide with me. I don't have a palace, but, you know, I have this cave. It's, it's, it's not too uncomfortable. Because he that seeks my life seeks yours. You are in good company when you do join the, the shepherd boy and all the 400 people that is distressed in this world. Distressed because of what's happening and how things are um, increasing. How the end day signs are showing up every day. How we can see the, the cooling and the getting cold, the waxing cold of the love that people used to have for their God. As we can see the uh, Antichrist system rising. As we can see the uh, Antichrist system rising. As we can see the Tower of Babylon being built higher and higher every day. As we can see how God's commandments are destroyed and overturned and replaced increasingly every month when there is a parliamentary meeting in some country. And how those, it's almost like the Bible says they've made void your law. They've made it to nothing your law. In fact, when the Noahide laws are coming into play very soon, it will actually be illegal. It will be against the law to follow the Torah of Yahuwah. They are totally overturning everything. So yes, we are in distress, Father. Yes, we are in debt. We have been working as slaves in Egypt for such a long time. It's time, the, the prophesied season is here for us to be taken out with the second great exodus to leave Egypt and this whole slavery system. We are absolutely in debt. We are all chained with the chains from the banks, from the dollar bill system with the pyramid and the one-eyed God, architect of the universe that is enslaving people through this monetary system. We are totally indebted and we are so discontented. We are so sick and tired of lukewarm Christianity and half-baked religion. We are discontented with our lives in the cities where everything is net a na wind, a chasing after wind trying to make enough money to pay off a house that you are still indebted um, to the bank. And your debt is just increasing every year. It's not decreasing. We are discontented with the life that Babylon and Egypt has chosen for us. And we want to come out of that life and join our king, our shepherd king in the cave where there is justice for the people of our God.